Hello crafty friends and welcome to today's Stamping September video. Today I'm going to take you through 10 ways of colouring stamped images. And for my stamping today I've chosen this very simple rubber stamp. It's a takeaway hot drinks container. And I've chosen this because it will really make it easy for me to show you the different ways of colouring in. I've used my Tim Holtz platform to stamp on my card fronts. And I use this because it's the best platform that I have for stamping with rubber stamps. Before we get started with the actual colouring, it's worth saying, I think, that probably the most important decision that you can make, or two most important decisions that you can make, when setting out to colour in a stamped image is choosing the right paper for the job and choosing the right ink for the job. So today I'm going to be using three different papers. I've got some mixed media paper here which is a very robust paper that's great for all sorts of water-based mediums. I've got some smooth white cardstock here which is great for blending on and using colouring pencils with. And I've got some Spectrum Noir marker paper here, which is great for using with alcohol markers. I've also got two black inks. Obviously, you don't need to stamp your stamped image in black ink, but the type of ink is really important. So Stazon is a solvent ink. It is permanent once dry when used with water-based media. So I'm going to use this with some of the water-based media that I'm going to do today. I've got Memento Dewdrop Tuxedo Black, which is a, I think it's water-based, but it is fairly permanent once dry. But this is good particularly for using with alcohol markers because it won't shift with alcohol. If you try using alcohol markers on Stazon, you will find that the black ink spreads out because of the solvent that's used. Pick the right paper for your medium, Pick the right inks for your medium. I have also on some of these heat embossed them with clear embossing powder. So I've got black ink trapped under clear embossing. That's another way if you haven't got a solvent based ink pad, you can use a water based ink pad, but trap the ink under embossing and that way it will be waterproof. So that's just a little note to get us started. So the first technique we're going to look at is watercolouring. Now you can use actual watercolours if you want or you can use any water-based ink. I'm going to use Distress Oxides today and I've got dried marigold, tumbled glass and shaded lilac to colour my container and I'm going to just add a little bit of water to the paint and paint it on. This paper is mixed media paper because it handles water really well. You could use watercolour paper. And I've stamped this in Memento Tuxedo Black ink, but I've also heat embossed over it in clear embossing powder, which makes a nice little barrier and just makes it a little bit easier to colour in because the colour shouldn't cross over the black barrier into the next area. I'm going to give that a little dry with my hairdryer and I think we'll paint the top blue. I do have a series on watercolouring so if you want more detail about watercolours and how to use them then check that out. I will leave a link in this video's description, just click the more arrow. That series will take you through some cards that I've made with watercolours, but also talk about the particular brushes and papers and paints that I like to use when watercolouring. So I have just painted a flat wash there. Now I'm just going to go in and add another layer of colour along the edges here to imply some shadows. This is wet on dry. I'm just dragging it across a little bit to leave some lightness towards the middle. You can add a bit of water to fade it out, but I'm going to leave that as it is right now. I'll pick up some more 
shaded lilac and add those shadows there. You could choose different colours to create your shadows. You could choose a darker purple or a darker orange. I think it might be worth adding a bit more blue. So just get a little bit of salty ocean here for a darker blue. Just add your shadows in or your darker areas. We can put a bit of extra orange underneath the lid where there would be a shadow and underneath the sleeve here that just creates some nice dimension get any harsh lines before the paint or the ink has dried you can fade those out with a wet brush or you can leave the harsh lines in it just depends on the look you're going for but as i say if you want more detail on water coloring then check out that playlist linked in the video description so i'd love to know what your favorite method of coloring stamped images is do let me know in the comments for technique number two we're going to look at watercolor pencils so i've got some faber castell watercolor pencils here these are just pigment watercolor paint in stick form and you can use them in a few ways for the lid i've got this light blue and i'm laying down some color at the edges where I want it to be dark. This is mixed media paper with Memento Tuxedo Black ink and heat embossing. So that's the same as the watercoloring that we did. And now I've got a wet paintbrush and I can use it to activate the paint and spread it out like watercolor. So I'm gonna try and keep the darkest bits at the edges and then just drag it in towards the middle and leave it lighter in the middle. You can add more colour by putting the pencil directly into water. The pigment will dissolve when you do that and then you can coax it around with a wet paintbrush. I think watercolour pencils are great for travelling. You can stamp loads of images and take them with a water brush or a paintbrush and your watercolour pencils and you've got some watercolour paints with you really. So as well as going direct to paper with your watercolour pencils, you can scribble on a bit of paper like this, get a wet paintbrush and pick up the colour. So basically turn it into a paint and add it as you would a watercolour paint. Obviously, the harder you press, the more pigment you'll lay down. So on this bottom part here, I'm not pressing very hard at all. So it's just a light wash of colour there. And I can hydrate that with water. And go back in and add some stronger colour at the edges. And I can get this darker brown for a bit of extra shadow, scribble it on there, get a wet paintbrush, pick it up and maybe just drop a little bit here down the sides. And I can make a little shadow along here under the cup lid and along under the sleeve. And I can use them exactly like watercolour paints really. And you can tilt them, let the water run collect any excess water off that you don't want on there so i'm going to take some dark blue here and run that down the edge of my sleeve and then add a bit of magenta as well and bring that out gently i'll take a slightly larger brush because we're going for a slightly larger area and i'm putting the water in the middle this time and I'm going to work it towards the colour and that will encourage the colour really to sort of stay more at the edges rather than dragging it out into the middle. If something is getting a bit dark I can go in with a wet paintbrush and pick up some of that water. Just keep going and working at it until I'm happy with the way it looks.
Technique number three is to use water-based markers. So these are zebra mild liners. You can use any water-based marker that you have. Again, this is mixed media paper with memento black ink and heat embossing over the top. So the black lines are well and truly waterproof. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of color along the edges. You could color everything with your marker if you wanted. I'm going to take some water because these are water based markers and use the water to spread the colour out. And this is why I've done it on mixed media paper. It just allows me to hydrate that colour and spread it out. If you get puddles of water forming that you don't want, you can always take a dry brush and Tilt it so those puddles run into a corner and then pick them up with your dry brush. I'm going to dry this with my hairdryer now. You can scribble your markers on a palette, a glass mat. Dip your paintbrush in some water and pick them up and use them in exactly the same way that I used the Distress Oxides. So you can use them like paints. I quite like just adding a little bit of colour where I think the shadows are going to be and then using a paintbrush to drag those out to create a lighter area. If you're using mixed media paper and you're gentle, you can actually put your marker into water. So if I make this wet and then I can actually add a little bit of colour like that to darken up the very edges. We'll take the purple and go down the sides of this where the shadows are going to be. So I'm imagining that there's a light shining directly on the front of my cup. And now we can do a light blue over the lid. And the purple, I'm going to do the knobble on the top of the lid purple. If you want to add your shadows with a darker colour pen, you can do that. You can just say flick them in from the sides. I've got a brown I could use if I want to add a bit of extra shadow. For this, under the lid, under the sleeve. It might be a bit harsh so I can soften that with some water and I can add this darkish bluish purple down maybe just down the sides like that in a straight line and then soften that with water so you can get some nice shadows and light and shading with water-based markers one of my favorite ways to color stamped images is to smush them. This is a rather sort of chaotic and haphazard way of colouring, but it's fun. And this is mixed media paper again with black memento ink and heat embossing. And I can take my mini smusher and smush it on. So that's the dried marigold. I shall dry that. Now I'll take a little bit of shaded lilac, add some water. Pick it up with my smusher, which I have cleaned, and smush it in sort of the middle area. And dry that again. I think I'll add another layer of the shaded lilac. And now for some tumble glass. If you dry between each layer of smushing, you will hopefully not make mud. So blue and orange are complementary colours. They are opposite each other on the colour wheel, which means if you mix them together, they will neutralise each other and make a muddy grey brown. But if you dry the orange before applying the blue or vice versa, then they should hopefully, with distress oxides at least, layer rather than mix and make mud. Just going to pick up a little bit of dried marigold and tap on a few splatters. So smushing and splattering are effective ways of 
colouring stamped images. It's a bit chaotic, nothing stays within the lines. You could, if you wanted, mask off some areas and just smush. You could quite easily put some washi tape along there and along there to mask off the top and the bottom of the cup and then just smush, let's say, in this area, if you had a bit of tape up here as well. So you can smush with masking and that way you would restrain your smushing to within the area that you've masked off. If you want to know how to make and use a smusher, then check out my smusher videos playlist. It's linked in the video description below. So speaking of masking then, I've got some washi tape here. I'm going to mask off around the sleeve of my cup. I've also added a couple of post-its. I'm going to mask that area off there. There's a little bit down here that's not covered. So everything on my card front is covered apart from this little sleeve. So I'm going to spritz with this spray. Sometimes this particular spray can be a little bit of a pickle. Sometimes it sends out a nice fine mist. Other times it squirts it like a fire hose. So we'll just see what we get today. But the idea is you can spritz onto an open area that you've masked off. You can also use a paintbrush to pick up some spritz and spatter it. So you can spritz and spatter. This gives a nice effect, hopefully, when we remove the masks. Right, let's see if this has uh, worked at all. So that has worked. I've got a little bit of spray on the black, which I don't particularly want, but I can rehydrate the spray with some water carefully and lift it off the black lines. Or once I've finished, I can go over the black lines in a black pen. And I can do that because I didn't heat emboss this ink. This is stays on on mixed media paper and I chose to do stays on rather than memento with heat embossing because when you're doing masking you want your mask to be 100% in contact with the paper so nothing can seep underneath and I think sometimes if you've got a bit of heat embossing there it's slightly raised so you could get some seepage so with this technique where I'm masking and let's say spritzing or splattering I might choose to do a non-dimensional image so stays on works because it's waterproof and it's flat while we're masking let us mask and blend so I can use my washi you can use masking tape you could cut a shape out of post-it, you could use masking paper. I'm gonna do the cup in dried marigold. Obviously you use whatever inks you've got and colors you want. And I've got a sponge fingered orba, which just allows me a little bit of control. Oops, I've got it on my finger and now I've got it on the front of the card. Let's see if we can work that off. Always mucky fingers. And I can do this bit here and I can add some shading by Increasing the intensity in the corners, or the sides, as we did with the water colouring and water markers, water base markers. I could, if I wanted, actually bring in a darker orange. This is spice marmalade and go in in the corners again, just to give that darkness. I can't remember if I said, but this is smooth cardstock with Memento ink on it. So the smooth cardstock is really good for blending and the Memento has been left to dry for a while so it won't smudge with the inks. Now we'll get the washi out again and we'll mask off the sleeve. So we'll go for the shaded lilac again. So I'm adding a bit of wilted violet for a darker colour. If your image doesn't lend itself to using washi tape as a mask, so for example, if it's not got many straight lines, maybe it's a critter or a character, just stamp it on masking paper a few times and then cut out the different bits, the different areas and use those. Right, so what are we on now? Blue, tumbled glass. 
think for a shadow, just use a bit of salty ocean. And there we have a blended image. So what colouring technique do you find most difficult or do you want to master? Do let me know in the comments. So for my next technique, we're going to do what I like to call over stamping. So we're going to stamp over the image. I've used stays on on smooth white card because the smooth white card is great for stamping on. And I didn't want to heat emboss because I didn't want the dimension of the heat embossing interfering with my stamps pressing directly on the paper. And I use stays on because I'm using water based inks and it won't bleed out into those. And over stamping is just stamping over your image. So you can, if you want, mask off some areas so that the stamping only goes in the open area. So you can take any solid stamp. Let's have a look. What one's big enough to cover the whole of my sleeve? Probably that one. So I've got my stamp on the block. I've got my shaded lilac. I'm going to ink it up and stamp it on. Do that as many times as you like. If you want to add some shading, you can take a darker colour like wilted violet. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can see where the edge of the washi tape is here. So I know where to add this colour. I can just dob that on. So when I stamp this roughly, where it was before, I should hopefully get some wilted violet on the edges. Yes, I have. And you can, if you want, take a textural stamp like this, ink it up, and then press that over. So you can add some texture as well, like that. And I'm going to give that a blast because there's quite a lot of ink on there now. And carefully, without getting my usual mucky fingerprints all over everything, peel that off. And there I have a stamped sleeve with some shading and some texture. Now, if you want to be a little bit more, what shall we say, uh, arty farty, you can take a stamp and stamp it on without masking. So it kind of, I've got inky fingerprints all over this already, but never mind. So you can kind of choose a stamp that is kind of the shape that you're looking for, but not exactly. So I've stamped this over the lid and it's gone over the edges, but it looks kind of cool like that. You could stamp that a few times. You could use a bit of darker ink just to add a bit of something. Suggestion of shading. And I'm just gonna add the washing over the areas I've already stamped. This is all gonna look a bit peculiar. It's not necessarily what I do on a card all of these sort of stamping techniques I'm just doing it to demonstrate so I masked off that again so we've just got the cup showing actually I'm going to take these off the side so that the uh, pattern spills out the side a little bit I think and I've got a bit of a grungy mixed media stamp here I'm going to load it up with distress oxide and stamp it so it spills out the side of my cup and I could just take a little bit of this Wilted violet out the side as well, just so there's a little bit of that going out sideways too. But you can see that you can stamp different textures through masks or without masks and get some really fun effects. So now for something a little bit different, we're going to do some paper piecing. So I've stamped my cup three times, once on this bit of patterned paper, which is a light orange peachy colour with some white flecks on it. And then I've done a purple one, which is going to be my sleeve. And I've also added a thanks onto that with a separate stamp. And then a blue one, which is going to be my lid. So I'm going to cut this one out completely. because so This is the base. So there's my main bit. Now I'm going to cut out my sleeve and now I'm going to cut out my lid. Before I assemble, I'm going to take a black pen, can be any black pen, and just run around the outside of everything so that everything has a black line around its edge. This will make everything come together and look like it's meant to be. 
And now I can glue these together to make my colourful cup. And I do want the little knobble to be purple. Once this has dried and stuck in place, I'll go around the edge of that little knobble in black. But I'll wait till that's dry because it's fiddly. There you go. Paper piecing is a way of colouring stamped images. Right, we're switching up again and now we're going to do alcohol markers. So this is a piece of Spectrum Noir alcohol marker paper. So I know it's going to work well with my Spectrum Noir tri-blend markers. Obviously, if you've got alcohol pens, use whichever paper and pens you have. I've stamped this in Memento Tuxedo Black because that's a really good ink for using with alcohol markers. Just make sure it's really dry before you start. With these pens, you get a light end, a medium in the middle and a dark and I believe the advice on the package is saturate your paper with the lightest colour the light end I'm going over that really well next add your darks where your shadows are going to be you can feather it flick it out or do whatever works for you. Then go in with your mid and overlap the dark a little bit and flick it out. And then you can blend it all out nicely with the light. So, so for my blue, that was blue turquoise blend, which is BT3, BT4 and BT5. For my cup, I'm going to use Earth Brown blend, EB1, EB2 and EB3. And for my purpley thing, I'm going to use Lavender Blend, which is LV1, LV2 and LV3. Just do the lid in the lightest purple. I don't need to worry about shading on that, I don't think. It's so small. I think I might need to re-ink this lavender. It's one I've used an awful lot. Once your alcohol markers are dry, you can go in with a white gel pen and add some highlights if you like. And there you go, another way of colouring a stamped image. So now we're going to look at colouring pencils as a way of colouring our stamped images. This is smooth white card, which is nice for colouring on. And I've stamped this in Memento Tuxedo Black without heat embossing because it's not really necessary. But there's no reason why you couldn't. And I've got my Polychromos pencils here. Prismacolor are some other nice pencils that work well. But obviously just use whatever you have. So I'm going to start off with a light blue and a sharp pencil and just gently colour with a very, very, very light pressure. Just laying down some colour, a nice light layer. And now I'm going to press a little bit harder here at the sides where I want it to be darker. And as I move towards the middle, reduce the pressure slightly. And the same over here. So I'm pressing harder and then moving towards the middle and lifting the pressure off. So I can start to see some change in the intensity of colour. It's definitely darker at the edges and lighter towards the middle. Now I'm going to get a darker blue and go in here and very, very lightly, just brushing the paper 
add a light layer. Same over here. And you can just very gently and very slowly and carefully build up your darkness. You can use pencils a bit like alcohol markers in that you can use a lighter colour to kind of blend out the darker colours. Paper stumps can also be helpful for blending. They're really dense, pointy stumps of paper, funnily enough. And you can brush those over your areas to get them to blend. You can get blending solutions like Gamsol to help with this. But I just like to do everything really gently and lightly using the pencils and maybe a paper stump. If you want to lighten things, you can lift colour a bit. So I've just got a vinyl eraser here, Mars Plastic Stettler Eraser. And I can gently, again, I'm not scrubbing, I'm just gently rubbing over the middle area. And that will ever so gently lift up some of the area that I've got the light in my imagination shining on my cup. And you can always, if you lift a little bit much, go in very gently again, lay down a very light layer of colour. Get your paper stump and blend to soften. So now we'll do the cup. This is light ochre. So what did I use there? I used light cobalt turquoise and light phthalo blue. This one is light yellow ochre and I've got an orange which is orange glaze. You can use your paper stump again. This has got blue on it so I'm going to maintain this end for cool colours and this end for warm colours. can use firmer lines to add some hard shadows. For my sleeve I'm using light magenta and purple violet and there you have coloured pencils. So there you go that's 10 way to colour stamped images. If you'd like me to do a video that's more focused on one particular colouring technique then let me know and I will definitely do that for you. But I do have that watercolour playlist that you can check out for more information on watercolours. And as I said earlier, I do have a smusher playlist. So if you want to know more about smushing, you can check that out. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with the supplies that you already have in your stash. If it has, please do let me know in the comments, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon for my next Stamping September video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.